Are you about to take a vacation that will make you unhappy? You could be if Donna skittles Sligan is right. We'll ask her why on the Dollar Stretcher interview. Hi, I'm Gary Foreman, editor of thedollarstretcher.com. Donna skittles Sligan is a CFP who is responsible for the joy of financial security.com and has recently finished a book with the same name. Donna, thanks for joining us today. You're so welcome, Gary. Thanks for having me. I just uh, saw some statistics uh, from Visa's annual travel survey, and they showed that 25% of their respondents will spend between $1,000 and $2,500 on vacations this year, and 10% more will spend between $2,500 and $5,000, which means that over a third of us uh, uh, will spend more than $1,000 on vacations, and yet your view is that uh, all that spending makes us unhappy. You know, I think that vacations are so important, and one of the messages in the book, The Joy of Financial Security, is that the experiences are much richer in terms of our happiness than buying things and materialistic things. And so I'm all in favor of vacations. The key, I think, is to have a budget, um, keep within your plan, and if you've budgeted a thousand and you've budgeted three thousand, that's perfectly fine and you should spend it and enjoy it. You just want to make sure you don't end up in credit card debt as a result of splurging during a vacation. And there's this tendency, I think, for us to go on vacation and just kind of say, oh, what the heck, we're on vacation, we're entitled, and just completely go off the budget. And that's what I would like people not to do. So the fact that I feel like I'm entitled to some downtime doesn't mean I'm entitled to do it without uh, any financial uh, constraints at all. You know, that's exactly right. We need to stick to our plan. The plan will lead us to financial security, and that's so important and gives us so many benefits. And so we just don't want to let a vacation throw us off of our plan. Now, I know you talk about uh, people being in vacation mode. Uh, what, is it, what does it do to us? Well, I think we do feel like we need it. You know, most of us are leading very chaotic lives. We're working really hard. We're on what I call the rat race treadmill. And so we really do need a break from that. We need to recharge our batteries, have some downtime. And I actually encourage people to think about, instead of just having one large vacation, maybe in the summer, that's a week or two weeks, think about having several long weekends. Because part of the fun of it is planning it, anticipating it, and then doing it. And then somebody pointed out to me, one of the benefits of that is that when you come back to work then, the work hasn't just been piling up and piling up. And so, you know, maybe that'll make you happier too. Now, one, one phrase that you use that I've not come across before is the joy of financial self-control. Uh, 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 please talk a little bit about that. Sure. Well, some people think joy and money cannot be in the same sentence, <laughs> and I understand that. A lot of people struggle with money, and it's stressful, and it's intimidating, but my feeling, I actually spent six years writing this book and doing all the research in psychology and neuroscience and economics, and my conclusion is that money doesn't buy happiness, but it most definitely impacts our happiness. And so if we manage our money wisely and we spend it wisely and we have a healthy attitude about it, it will definitely make us happier. They go hand in hand. Now for somebody who, who hasn't experienced that, is, is there a way that they can change that pattern in their lives? You know, I think they can, and it takes very deliberate actions, small actions, but deliberate. Um, one of the things that I recommend is that we all look at the money messages we learned as children and how our parents and grandparents handled money. So, for instance, in my case, my grandmother gave me some really wonderful money messages that I learned from, and I really think that's probably why I became a financial planner and maybe why, why I'm a good saver, an investor, and why I wrote this book. I, I credit her for that. But one person told me recently that her money message that she remembers that was powerful was her father every month at the end of the month sitting at the kitchen table working on the expenses and looking up and saying, we're in the rat again every month we're in the red again and so she turned that around and became an avid saver and she and her husband are looking forward to retirement and she said I didn't want to ever be in that situation again but I think the key is to become aware of what we were taught whether it's positive or negative and then we can deal with it and make some changes. Now, I know you talk about that in your book uh, and also on your website thejoyoffinancialsecurity.com uh, now we'll provide links uh, to both uh, uh, but can you tell uh, tell the viewers a little bit about both, please? 
Yes. Well, let me start with the website. We have filled it with tools, and we've tried to make it as as user friendly as possible. So I do recommend people go there. Um, and the book, the website came out of the book, obviously. So they support each other. Um, but the message in the book is that taking control of your money is not rocket science, and so it doesn't need to be intimidating. We can take these really simple steps and make great progress in terms of taking control. And the second message in the book is that the psychology research shows us that we control roughly 40% of our own happiness. And I have not seen that research, and I don't think most people are aware of that. And that's this wonderful opportunity to make some of these little changes and actually become happier. Fantastic. Well, Donna, we thank you for sharing your wisdom uh, with our viewers today. And uh, uh, we hope that it will improve their financial lives and bring a little extra joy uh, to them. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me.